football hits the goal. It's not Shearer or Cole, it's Zamora. <laughs> What's the other one that you said you were going to sing? When the ball hits your head and you're sat on Rose's head, that's Zamora. I don't agree with that one, no. I don't agree <laughs> with that one. Shit your pants. It doesn't even go, does it? Bobby Zamora. Bristol Rovers. Help me out, man. Top, top now. <laughs> Bristol Rovers. Brighton. 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 Tottenham. Tottenham. West Ham. West Ham. Fulham. Back to Brighton. QPR. 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 Playoff final goal. Oh, I forgot. Brighton. England. Last episode of the series. Thank you, everybody who subscribed, everybody who's listened, all series, and we're back again in February. Have a good Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, everybody. All Merry best. Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Sweaty. Why is, that, why is that so sweaty? Glammy. Mine? Yeah. I just wash my hands. Oh, no, uh, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bobby Zamora. See you next year. Warm tie. Canary Wolf. Well, yeah, I grew up not too far from here. So, um, yeah, this area's changed a lot. Like Canary Wolf has anyway, so it's changed a lot um, from when I was a kid, so. Big West Ham fan growing yeah, up. Yeah, West Ham fan. So, yes, yeah, my local team. I managed to go and watch them when I was a kid. West Ham versus Oxford was my first game. Remember that? Like, uh, Who was playing for them then? Oh, it would have been George Paris, Frank McAvenny. Yeah, those were the strikers at that time when I first went to go and see him. When you first started playing, because there's, there's have you heard of Walls End Boys Club? Where Shearer, yeah, yeah. Carrot, I think yeah, it was yeah. where Carrot came through. Yeah. But you yeah. played for the, the, the southern, southern version. version. Yeah, Sam it's Senrab. Yeah, Senrab, yeah. So that was that was mad really. Like it's crazy when you look back now to think that five of us went on to play for England, like from a Sunday side, like full internationals. There was never played all together at the same time. But Five of us all going from... Who were the other four? Uh, Ledley King, John Terry, Paul Kincheski, and J. Lloyd Samuels. So, and then uh, there was other players that went on to make it pro, but those guys, you know what I mean? We went on to play for England, which is, which is absolutely crazy. I remember as a kid thinking or being told, like, in good sides, whether it's your county side or wherever it is, maybe one of you will make it as a pro. Maybe one of you will make it as a pro. And then Four, yeah. five, and five, 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 of us, five of us went to England. Nine of us, I think, made it pro. So, yeah, mad from one Sunday side in, in East London. It's like it, any professional footballer that makes it, they'll always say, I'm in my Saturday team, in my district team, I was the best player. I was always yeah. the one that was going to go. How were you thinking of the, with all these lads? Because Terry was a midfielder then, was it? John was sent to midfield, yeah. Um, and he, he used to head the ball at age... Yeah, 11, 12, 13. I remember he had fucking curtains back then as well, like, <laughs> and the undercut. You remember the undercut? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I had that. one of them. Beautiful. <laughs> remember the days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember him on like a Sunday, like heading the ball wherever a goalkeeper kicks it out, you know, like fucking idiot. And I just run onto the, onto the, the ball through or across from a corner. And you know, like people just like going, how oh, he does now, bang, power, hammering it like that. Who were top dog, like who? who was like regarded as the best? No, I, I don't think, I don't personally think, it'd be interesting to ask those guys who everyone saw as the best player. I don't think, I certainly didn't look at anyone and go, call you're miles ahead of me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because all of my sort of childhood, growing up, banging in 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever it goes it is for whatever so team what, you play So what you're for. saying is Terry's, John Terry's best through ball was from his forehead. Correct. <laughs> Not his right foot or his left foot. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> He's big Swede, yeah. So, nah, but he, yeah, he had that ability on the ball, real good player technically in, in centre midfield. And obviously he ended up playing centre half and that, that shows, you know, why he's so good on the ball. And I, I still don't think people really give him credit for how good he is on the ball. Like mm. you say, left foot and right foot, by the way, he can ping a diag. If you go back and watch videos of, of him, how, how good he was. But I mean, Ledley was the same. He was just like, never seemed to be stressed even as a kid he's always just chilled Chill. laid back and just like calm and casual and he was actually someone i loved playing against funnily enough Ledley. yeah yeah i mean but i mean i had harry redknapp as my manager at qpr and harry said do you know what you're one of the worst people I, well one of the 
the people that I hated coming up against because Ledley never done well against you. He said, hey, I never, sh never really shouted at Ledley, only ever it was against you. I don't, know, I don't know why, but I used to enjoy playing against Ledley. Would he, what, is he, because some defenders don't like a wrestle. I mean, I only played a short time, but I remember playing against Liverpool. Mm. And you know, as a big lad, I've gone like that with Carragher, you have a bit of a wrestle, and he kind of let us. Yeah. He didn't want to give you a thought. Back. It's easy, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Not, but you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Jamie's the same. Jamie's actually said, surprisingly enough, one of the worst players to play against. I remember this, I, like, I got a load of tweets or whatever it was. The worst player, you wouldn't say Thierry Henry, you wouldn't say whatever it was. He said, the worst, Bobby Zamora. Like, because just, I think he knows the same. Once the ball comes up, I'm not going to win it. And for a big man, bring it on. Just keep playing that ball. Because he, he knows he's never going to win it or he's going to win it one out of 10. And it just doesn't play into his, his game plan. And yeah, he got sent off against us and you can roll him. Like, I was, but when I watch him, top defender do you know what I mean like playing against <clears throat> whoever it was aggressive and I don't know he just didn't like that big big physical sort of guy up front I think that was the, the his Achilles heel compare that what? to Morgs Chris Morgan in the championship even if he yeah. knows he's not going to win it bring it his, on his head's going yeah. in anywhere straight through the back of your head yeah, yeah of course still take, take a take a <laughs> stitches yeah. like yeah. more than happy with that yeah I wonder I, if anybody's ever said that about me like it was horrible to play against. Probably, somebody, probably, some, possibly not. Somebody really did. Horrible look at. <laughs> <laughs> How did you end up at Norwich then? All my sort of 12, 13, 14, I was at West Ham. And... Uh, did that hurt getting released? What age were you? I got released from... I actually left West Ham. There was ah. a... We ended up having two centre of excellences and they, they merged together. And... Um, wasn't getting enough game time really. And I thought I'll go somewhere else. I actually picked up uh, Osgood Slatters. So as a kid, so I couldn't play football for six months. Couldn't do any sport in, in school or anything like that. It was agony. But all that time that I was out, there would be clubs that would pick up the phone and phone you out like, are you fit yet? Are you fit yet? I promise you, Norwich phoned every single weekend. Every single weekend they phoned, is, is he fit? Is he fit yet? No, not yet. So by the time I got fit and I was ready, I thought, well, listen, They've been on the phone. They're so keen. Yeah. I've got to go and go to there. So it was a little bit of a slap. Turns out one of my best pals, Luke Williams, he was at Norwich as well. So we used to travel up. We used to meet at Brentwood, get on the coach and, and travel up on a weekend to, to, to play there. But um, yeah, that team was a team of monsters. Like big physical lads. Uh, Daryl Russell was in the team. Did you play with Daryl? Yeah. Yeah, like... He, did, he was probably that size at like 15, 16. <laughs> and the whole of that team, Barrington, Belgraves, Sean Carr, uh, the whole lot, like quads like that, mustaches at like 15. <laughs> like um, that whole team was, and I was fucking tiny, tiny. And Luke was tiny as well, like slim, centre midfield, ball player. And we both got, both got released. Look, don't think you're going to grow. Don't think you're going to be big enough. So I'm like, fine, fair enough. The week after, both of us ended up going to um, to Bristol Rovers on a trial. We played 45 minutes, pulled us off and went with Rothy both an apprenticeship. So how old were you at this point? How old? How old? Uh, 15, 16, last year of GCSE or GCSEs coming. When did the growth spurt happen then? Uh, it's probably like 16 to 17. I was like a late developer. Yeah, 16 to 17, I just went like that. Because I didn't go home every weekend either, so I didn't see my mum and dad every weekend. Mum opened the door like, yeah. who's this? Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly <laughs> that. Yeah, exactly that. So I just absolutely shot up. Um, and I think, but when I was little, I was short, fast, like skinny little thing, just absolutely rapid. That's how I got my goals when I was younger, just like quick. And then I think my game evolved in terms of look, everyone else is bigger and stronger. You have to be and quicker than you you have to be a little bit more technical. So I ended up, my game had to change to be able to stay at the standard that it was. Your game has to evolve a That's little good, bit because yeah. your, your, your stride changes mm. and your acceleration, all those little bits and pieces. Your game, that's been, I think, the story of my career, really, of just being able to evolve and change to certain circumstances. And I ended up going to, to Brighton on loan, obviously, and hitting the ground running, scoring goals. Two promotions, Not, two years. Yeah, yeah, well, the, fir the first six, I went for six games first. Yeah. So I scored six in six there, which was like phenomenal for me. Like, I was just like absolutely buzzing. And then I went back to Bristol Rovers for the end of the season. 
there was still, I think Barry had gone, but there was still Jason Roberts, Jamie Curran and, and Nathan Ellington. So I was still number four at that time. I remember we had uh, my youth team manager at the time, Phil Beta. I don't know, do you ever come across him? Phil Beta, Welsh guy, Cardiff, left back. Yeah, no shit, as you can imagine, mm. left back from fucking Wales. Like, no, <laughs> no, like that. He came in the office with me, with Ian Holloway. I think I went to go and see Ian Holloway first and said, oh, like, do you think I can go to Brighton? He was like, nope. Or like just some sort of quick discussion. No, gone. So I went back, said to Phil, and he was like, nah, fuck this, mate. Come on. When it came in the office, sat down, Gary Penrice was there and Ian Holloway and Phil Bate was like, what are you standing in this fucking way for? Like, he's going to go and play some first team football. Like, what's, what's that? Are they wanting you on a permanent then, Brighton, or just another loan deal? No, that was to be like 100 grand they were going to pay, right. which was massive. That's good of him, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was really good, really good. And I remember Ian Holloway saying, well, is that, is that actually what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, I do. So went, okay, all right, cool, no, no problem. So I ended up going, going to, to Brighton, which was yeah, amazing. Such a good set of lads, amazing set of guys. So you, think Holloway, you think Holloway saw his own ass and thought, I'll tell you what, fuck this young little prick then, he can fuck off. Uh, no, don't think so. Just, it was like, yeah, I think he, he realised, listen, I am standing in his way. He is, we have got three lads that are ahead of him mm. at the minute. And like, really, is it, is it, am I justified in keeping him here? And it was, it was what I wanted to do. Go did you play first in three. Sorry, mate. Did you see it very much as, I've got to go down to work my way back up again? Because it's not I the Brighton. It, I didn't see it down, though, because I wasn't playing, so. A different Brighton to what it is today. I'm at Port Cabins, the old ground. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, such a special place, Re really was. Just the, the lads, like the second I walked in or on loan, like some real good characters, old school, like just fucking brilliant. Danny Cullip and Charlie oh, yeah. Oatway, Charlie Oatway, yeah, yeah. And you know, like, as you went throughout your career, did you enjoy that dressing room more than the... Uh, yeah, that, that dressing room was probably the most brutal you could get. Really, <laughs> banter. Get some stick. Um, no, I didn't. I like. Well, everyone had a little bit of something. If you if you didn't have something about you, you couldn't survive in there. Really. Um, yeah, just you know, what I mean, just the fines, the committee, everything. Fucking was just on it every single time. Everyone just fucking flip flops in the shower, shower gels, no borrowing this. But every daily, like brutal banter. Great characters, and on a Saturday, everybody willing to to fight for each other to, to get a win, really. So it was amazing. Mickey Adams done a great job there. And we had Alan Cork, who was, who was obviously part of the crazy gang. Um, poor guy used to get terrorised as well by, <laughs> by that, like literally stripped naked, dragged through the training ground. Like, what, the assistant the manager? Assistant manager, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean, it was fucking brutal. Mickey, uh, Mickey used to call it on sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like, at the end of training or whatever. See, people might would not he, comprehend this. Would he enjoy this. it and take it well? Do you know? Who, Corky? Yeah. Oh, he's part of the crazy gang, so yeah. He's... Yeah, but I, you still, you're bolt naked in the middle of a field, aren't you? You know yeah. when you get up and you're just covered in shit and you can't the assistant, the assistant, yeah. assistant yeah. manager. Yeah. You've still yeah. got a good bit of authority, haven't you? Yeah. Assistant yeah. manager. Good yeah. one, lads. <laughs> no, it was good. That was a good balance. Like, everyone still respected him, which is, uh, you, uh, you might find hard to believe, but they did. If he said something, you'd listen to him. Yeah. But, you know, if if he overstepped the mark, there was, a, there was, the manager was okay with fucking, I nah, put him in his place, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little bit, of, like the whole change room just buzzed off it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Was there anybody who was not in the team and thought, fuck it, I'll give him a dig here with that guy. And just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think there was a few, I think it was a few boots. Yeah, there was a few boots thrown in and stuff <laughs> when he's getting dragged along the floor, <laughs> tops over his head, like <laughs> fucking mad. But yeah, it was just so, so good. Like looking back now, just amazing. And I don't think, I don't think you get that in the Premier League really. You get great times and it's just different. You got them two promotions. Did it get to the point where you thought, I need to I need to move on? Even though you're happy and you're doing well scoring, do you think you got relegated, relegated from the first division? Was that your time to go? From the championship. Championship, yeah. Championship, yeah. Um, yeah, I do you know what? There was discussions towards the end of the season. If we'd have stayed up, would I have stayed? Um, but for me, I knew like Glenn Hoddle would come maybe seven, eight times along with Chris Hewton to, to games and... Do you know this? Yeah, I mean, fucking at, the Wigdeen's, the time. The Wigdeen's tiny, fucking, is that, <laughs> like, where, where he sat, but it was only like six rows anyway, so it's a little bit, again, that film? Little, bit, little bit hard, really. You could hear, yeah, you could hear, probably hear him fucking talking, you know, And when it obviously were coming to watch you. They, yeah, they came to watch, and I think, um, do you know, I, I, I'm supposed to be going to watch West Ham um, 
that's a train um, I've been meaning to for the last year. And I, I keep meaning to ask Moisey whether he came. I think, I think David Moyes came as well. Um, Everton. Yeah, when he was at Everton. So, yeah, there was a few managers that had come and, and watched and, yeah, I knew the interest was there, obviously doing doing well and still done done well in the championship as well. Um, and is your head just on playing well, performing? Well, it obviously must have been the goals you were getting. Was it never, you never thought about kicking off or anything? No, nah, really, really wasn't. But we, uh, that manager, when we was in the championship, was uh, Steve Coppel, Steve I Coppel, think. yeah. Yeah, and Cops was like, Keep never standing in your way. Yeah, never going to stand in your way. Like all the way, the back end of that season, like keep doing what you're doing, keep scoring goals. If someone comes in and the money's right, I'm not going to, never going to stand in your way. Don't worry about that. Just Where see. were you yourself? Are you, are you starting to be like a peacock now thinking, I'm fucking not bad nah, at this not, game? No, nah, you couldn't couldn't do that in a Brighton team. Like I said, the changing room was was brutal. Not for one second. If 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 there was anyone with any sort of ego in there, they'd got slapped to pieces. Like, I mean, slapped, <laughs> not just fucking like, drop yourself down a gear or two like you'd have got you'd have got a punch off of charlie or danny or something so <laughs> now those guys looked after me in terms of yeah on a saturday obviously going with a little bit of a reputation scoring goals there are center halves out there who want to fucking snap you to pieces so is it and, how, how important that possibly is you know obviously there's you talk of bullying and stuff now right but how important that is to just keep certain players grounded and how it might help progress the career. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. But that's just down to certain characters though. I think the way people have been brought up, the, yeah, the friends they surround themselves with, you know what it's like. You, there are there are people when you can take them out of anywhere and put them somewhere else, they'll still be an absolute fucking bell end wherever you put them mm. really, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or whoever, they look, yeah. And I've been in changing rooms in, in the Prem with lads that have come in with big egos and it doesn't, doesn't work when you're fighting and you're, you know, yeah, it just yeah. doesn't work. Fuck off. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have someone else instead of you. You might be the most unbelievable player in the world. If you're not going to roll your sleeves up, then fuck off. We'll do it, we'll do it without you. I'd rather play with 10 men. Different individuals react in different ways. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But um, yeah, that, that change room certainly, yeah, as I say, sort of kept me grounded, even if I wanted to, to, to try. So with that grounding then, how was you when Tottenham came in, you signed, you arrived walking into that dressing room mm. with bigger names, Bigger, bigger players. That, that was amazing as well. Like, uh, obviously, Ledley, who I grew up with, he was there. That so, must have helped. Yeah, just another a good lad. But we had we had good young players there as well. You know, Simon Davis, who I ended up meeting up with again at Fulham. But and then we had a lot of older players that were really good. So Jamie Redknapp sort of took us under his under his wing, and I think yeah, young English boys like he, Jamie always yeah kept his eye on Gus Poirier was brilliant as well there was a, all the senior players all the players that were there really were really good real real good with me different dressing in. room though I imagine yeah different dressing room yes and yeah, it all just jumps up to the Premier League and it, it all changes we had like Robbie Keane was fucking phenomenal unbelievable player unbelievable Stephen Carr and yeah Darren Anderton just real real good characters Gary Dock Gary Dock, Gary Dock. Uh, yeah the ginger pele yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Dock, what, Dock what, I can imagine it more beneficial hanging around with Jamie Redknapp on a night out than what it were <laughs> fucking Gary Dock you know you know, <laughs> well, you definitely you need the birds if you're with Dock though with Jamie <laughs> Jamie they might come over but they don't even want to stay with Jamie so um, no like real yeah really really good changing room really enjoyed myself there enjoyed my time there yeah for me I think people say like oh he was only there eight months or whatever it was and yeah you, you got one goal in six starts or or whatever I, I don't, I I'm not 100% sure what it was but for me we signed Helder Postiga at the same time so from Port, from Portugal we came from Sporting or or one of those so he was he played in the under 21s I played in the 21s that's summer as well and he played for Portugal and they paid 10 million euros 10 point something million euros for him and they paid a million quid for me so in my eyes I'm like got the Portuguese equivalent here I've yeah. scored one goal you got to fucking score 10 like yeah. genuinely that's how I saw <laughs> it like, you you're be supposed to be 10 times better than me yeah exactly that so I was like perfect sweet like no real pressure on me to go out there and score goals like or what really and again that same situation though that they paid 10 million quid for him he started more games, didn't score any more goals yeah, than me. Do you know what I mean? Like, so for me, I was like every week, all right, cool. I want to be fucking playing, but I understood that they paid 10 million quid. They're not going to, they're not just going to pay 
me and said it. It's it, like, still frustrating though. Yeah, it was frustrating, but I didn't. I never went there thinking I'm going to start every single game anyway. Do you know what I mean? How old were you when you went to Spurs? At uh, 21. Right. Oh, so 21, I think. So yeah, yeah young. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Good age, I think. Good yeah. age. But Held was exactly the same. Same age, everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. So for me, it was, it was a good eight months. But yeah, I wasn't playing as much as I wanted to. I didn't think I was going to because of Helder and, and uh, West Ham came along in the January. Congratulations, everyone who caught Trumps on the uh, fair play this weekend. We said both Manchester teams would win. They did not. <laughs> on my head. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've got a tenner in your account. But we go again this week. We always go again. I tell you what we have got this week. A Bobby Zamora special. Oh, the Zamora special. Tottenham, West Ham this weekend. And we are saying that you both teams will not score. So if both teams score... They win. ...in the Under the Cosh special this weekend on Fair Play, if you've not already downloaded the app, download the app, get involved, use the code Kosh, you get sent the Kosh special, and if Tottenham and West Ham score... You win. You win. And I've got and to be only, honest. It's a fiver, low stakes, good fun, and you win a fiver if both teams score. I've got to be honest, I think the both teams will, <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> but you've picked it again. Both You're on a roll. Score, no. You're on a roll. So. so if both West Ham and Tottenham score, you win a fiver in our low stakes. Good bit of fun. Bet with fair play. And it's not just about our bet either. You can have a bet with your mates on anything that we keep talking about. I had a good one on FIFA the other day. Round Robin, six of us. Hey, our lads, download this app. Guess who won? Not me. Briggsy. <laughs> <laughs> but it made it, it made it a lot more enjoyable, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Because when, when you see them, it's there. Yeah. Click of a finger. Almost touch it. Yeah. When you, you two one down, ten minutes to go, there's still something to play for, isn't there, on the old FIFA? Yeah. So get yourself involved. The link's in the description. And this week, hold on, hold on, this week... Last episode of the series. If you sign up this week, link in the description, use the code COSH, you're going to get a £10 free bet in your account. Kerching for the last, last special of the series. Say no more, Chris. Changing lives. Mm -hmm. So the sign up, £10 free bet. £10 in your account. All you've got to do, put in that code COSH. Remember, link's in the description. You've got to be over 18 and take us out. Please do gamble responsibly. Just a bit of fun. Talk us about Leeds. Dalmat. Sorry, Bobby. Oh, Dalmat. Stefan Dalmat. Yeah, fucking well, there you go. There's one of the there's one of the guys that I'm talking about in terms of like ego and I don't know, like just a I, cock. Yeah, <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the better word, isn't it? It's a cock. <laughs> yeah, like honestly though, he's I thought he's, you were putting words in your mouth then, but yeah, yeah, yeah he was. I'm glad his words and not your cock. <laughs> not the actual thing. Um, but he, he was fucking incredible, mate. Like in training, you could not get the ball off of him. Like genuinely, I remember Redders and Robbie and everyone going, fucking hell, let's look like. Watch, he don't give the fucking ball away. So strong, so technically gifted, but the attitude fucking stank. Absolutely fucking stank. He was at, was he at PSG, Inter Milan? I think Mourinho had had him. And like all those fucking great clubs and all those good managers couldn't deal with him because he was just an absolute tool. Like we played, we played a game um, at White Hart Lane and I remember sitting on the bench and him going like that to his hamstring to the manager. And I think, I think Glenn Hoddle was in charge then, or, or no, Pleat. So he's rubbing his hamstring, rubbing his hamstring. And then all of a sudden he just walks off the pitch down the tunnel. Everyone's like, what the fuck's going on there? Physio's run after him, like obviously. He comes back out, just like 35 minutes into the first half. And I'm, so by that time, he fucking stuck another player on. But he's, yeah, he's done. He said he's done his hamstring. I'm like, all right, cool. All right, so I'm, managers like yeah, we're like fucking weird way of doing it, isn't it? So <laughs> we come, we come here, we come in at half time. He's got the ice on his on his hamstring. He speaks French. He's like a bit arrogant like that. We all go out. We come back in after the game, expecting him to be here. He's fucking shot off. 
subsequently turned, he doesn't come back on a Monday. He doesn't come, doesn't come in on Sunday. He doesn't come back on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. He turns up on the Thursday and everyone's like, what the fuck? Like, we're trying to, there was uh, Johnny Blundell, I think his name was, Belgium kid, centre midfield, sort of became pals with him. We're like, where the fuck is he? He's like, he's in France, he's in Paris, he's in Paris. It's like, what? He said, yeah, he subsequently found out that he had booked a flight to get home back to Paris, but he'd realised that he wouldn't be able to make it unless he'd left the half-time. Pulled his hamstring. No, he hadn't pulled his hamstring, <laughs> fuck, but <laughs> he'd realised that he couldn't get out of the ground, couldn't get to where he needed to go to unless he left at half-time. So he thought, fuck that, I'll just do that. <laughs> and then he'd come back and he'd like just fucking smash balls away or just, but like, there any lads, wise. like you know, you you talking before like at Brighton about s lads getting slapped back down. Was there, would he get some stick? Would he? Yeah, a couple of couple of crunching tackles. I think he, yeah, like the lads just got fed up of it. Do you know what I mean? So we we had that a couple of times at Spurs with him, and then yeah, I just I don't know what happened to him. He just he went and don't think he came back. Yeah, I don't think he even lasted the season or half a season or whatever it was. I don't even know what happened to him after. Just. Because you're going but, to be doing it, aren't you? We've talked before about certain players getting a bit of extra leeway. Yeah. If they've got the the ability You've to back it up. You've got the pitch to do it, though, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the exactly. manager, yeah. You've got a flight in that. Yeah, and the managers, the managers. I think David Pleat was was what I remember with with Stefan is David Pleat really wanted him to do well, but the lads weren't having it. It's like, no, not we'll fucking kick the shit out of him then, and if you're not going to deal with it, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was good. It was good that the, the lads do that, you know? That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. Um, <laughs> Did you feel like you had unfinished business when you went to West Ham? You know, getting released or you left and all that, um, that age, but... No, no, not really. So I supported. So I was like, all right, cool. You've had to pay a couple of quid for me or part of the deal with Jermaine to go the other way. So yeah, it, it was what it was. How was Pardew to play for? Chocolate. Chocolate, he loved, him, <laughs> loved himself, parts. A yeah. good chocolate, though, in a good yeah, way. Yeah, he was right. He was good. Yeah, he was good. So, but yeah, fully loved himself. But um, yeah, not, nice guy. And yeah, we, good, good, good changing room. We had there a lot of young English boys just fucking play footy, enjoy it. Training was a buzz every day, score goals or whatever it is, and then fucking have a good night out in London as well. So, like, like a real good group, 10. 15 of us probably on a weekend, do you know what I mean? So, That's a good squad, isn't yeah, it, for a night out? Yeah, good We had some Especially experience, say, uh, your Teddy Sheridan, so it could open up fucking doors in nightclubs, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> You're creating chances yeah, yeah, in no, no, nightclubs. No, no, no. Give Teddy another year. <laughs> He's fucking 49, I know, I'll give him another year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but yeah, and then we had you know, fucking James Collins and Matty Everington and for Rio Coca, Harewood, fucking Anton. Yeah, wow. And right, real good, real, real good set of boys. So every weekend, it was, you know what I mean? Let's do well on a, on a Saturday, which we did do really. We, yeah, surprised a lot of people, I think, in the, in the Prem those first couple of years. Um, yeah, just a real buzz, real good place. And Pards was, was a good character, although he absolutely loved himself. I mean, are you feeling comfortable as a Premier League footballer now? Yeah. Like, are you thinking, I, I can do this? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, scored some goals, played some some good games, and yeah, managed to stick Sol Campbell on his ass, didn't I? Do you know what I mean? That <laughs> last game, last game for Arsenal, you know. So that sort of, I know a lot of my pals were thought I was a dead man walking actually after after that game, and uh, the West Ham boys. I, I, I scored that goal, and the boys because before the game, the lads were like, "Fuck me, Sol's going to smash you to pieces. He's going to kick you up in the air. He's going to do this. He's going to all the better lads on our team, on my team, right?" I'm like, "Fuck <laughs> yeah, right, cheers, boys." As it happens, I, I managed to stick him on the floor, take a touch, and whip it into the top corner. So my celebration was "Fuck off, Sol." <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting out of the game afterwards and like all the like load of other people, I think Ashley Cole or or who was it? Like Johnny Fortune were like, fuck me, did you just say fuck off soul? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, oh no, I did. But I was just like in my head, like sort of saying it to the boys that were <laughs> Fuck me, I'm a dead man. As it happens, he didn't play for Arsenal again. He, he went in and had a row with with Wenger and then um and never played again. So um yeah. 
Yeah. It was uh, Stevie Bywater. We yeah, well, interesting character. Goalkeeper, well, obviously, they're all fucking mad, aren't they? So he, he's probably well, the maddest, though. Yeah, he's, he's up there. He's the maddest I've played with. He's up there. I remember he he uh, <laughs> he went away in the summer once to America and done six weeks of MMA fighting. Like this is like when MMA is not even really sort of big. He comes back. And he just wants to beat everybody up and train him, like just like choke him, <laughs> choke him out, show, show what he's learned. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's fucking mad, mad, amazing guy. By what I really, really fucking good, good boy, and yeah, I, I love him to bits. Real fucking yeah, funny, funny boy. Are they doing his snotting then? Because when I played with him, he used to blow his nose in his yeah, t-shirt actually, and then. Yeah. Pat, yeah, pat, it, pat it back yeah, down on his chest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, now you say that. Yeah, I wouldn't have been one of the first things that comes into mind, but now you say that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, a real good character. Again, it's just hard to, it's hard to, there's so many good boys that you come across in, in footy in there over the years. But it's so strange, though, as you guys will know, that as soon as you leave a club, however tight and close, you probably only speak to one, two, afterwards really yeah. like we're, we're close mad, close. and every single but you're in with those boys for three years or whatever it's four years every day single in, day, day in day out like real close and as soon as you leave it's like the fucking door shuts it's you on the way out and then fucking off you go like with that though if you pick up them same 10 15 lads and you organize a night out it'll just come back like that yeah it, yeah, it yeah. might not have spoke to them for five six years yeah but yeah. when you're out, you just need an, exactly event. the same, you just yeah. need an entertainment manager, Paul's yeah. career to get everyone together. Organising it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the thing, trying to get everyone together. Yeah, it's mad. Was Teddy good for you on the field? Like, yeah, Ted was amazing. Player to learn from. Ted was amazing. Really, really good. Um, for me, he, yeah, he, was, he came in a period where I actually picked up a, an injury. So I was out for, I'm going to say two, three months. We actually had Matty Upson as a centre half then, who's like strong. And I, I, again, it was sort of an evolution of my game that I was tall, not necessarily strong then, but I got injured. We had an Aussie sports scientist uh, come in, wasn't interested in football at all, like nothing. Couldn't give a flying fuck about it. But he was all about strength and conditioning. So. I was in the gym with him for two months, probably, just in the gym, just doing weights, getting stronger and stronger. I remember going back out on the pitch, the first one of the first sessions, and a ball coming over to me, and Matty Upson coming, pushed me from behind, and I, I sort of went like that, and he didn't come through the back of me, and I thought, okay, I said, all right, cool. All right, the ball come over again, think, oh, mate, no, he ain't come through the back of me. Like, Fuck <laughs> me, I don't actually have to go short anymore. Hold up a second, go on. <laughs> stick it over here. Bang. <laughs> you my, game, my game changed. I was like, yeah, I don't have to go sh like short, don't have to go into little pockets. I can just fucking stand now. And then my game just sort of changed. And But Teddy was amazing at like your little movements off and just watching him, playing with him. And he was always, well, he liked to play with me and I, I, I loved to play with him. We didn't, you don't get that very often because we had Harewood, we had Rebrov as well. So there was a little bit of a rotation from some time to time, but Ted was like, I'm open with you fucking this weekend. I'm open with you. I was like, yeah, fucking likewise. But he was just amazing. I remember I got called up. I was, I'd left, I'd gone to West Ham. I got called up for, um, for England and Ted messaged me to say like, listen, when you're going into that changing room, by the way, I'm telling you now, don't fear anything, you've fucking got this. Like, I remember thinking, fuck it. I was nearly crying reading his, his message, like a big long message. Mate, fucking known it for years, you're good enough, da, 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 fully deserved. You'll see as soon as you fucking get into that first keep ball session, you'll see. I remember reading a fucking hell class. And that give you like, confidence going yeah, in? Yeah, 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 it did, yeah. And then going into that and yeah, being able to deal and cope with everything that was, like, I wish I could, I wish, like I desperately tried to find my first training session with, that, with England. I was fucking on fire. <laughs> I swear to even God. if you do say so yourself. Like, even if I, honestly, if I could, and I've tried, because we had the analysts at Fulham went to England with Roy Hodgson when he was there. 
And I messaged him to say, mate, see if you can dig out. Please, mate. <laughs> like, send mate, it mate, mate, can't find it. Can't find it. I was like, no, no. Because honestly, I'm fucking on fire. <laughs> honestly. Like, like, it's like Bobby, Bobby's ringing me about that yeah, training session mate, again. Mate, honestly, fucking get over it, you cunt. <laughs> no, mate, honestly, I was, yeah, real good. I wish I could. I wish because I'd still be playing it now. I'd still be playing it. Like, <laughs> get on that one, boys. Get on that one. Before I we would, go on, we need to speak about the playoff final. The Preston one. Because oh, we'll yeah. get shot. Yeah. Yeah. You, you was, were confident, weren't you, going into it? Yeah. Because you were flying. Yeah, we were doing well. We were just in a good space. And yeah, I'd sort of come in form as well. So I think I scored both uh, legs against Ipswich. Just, I was in a confident place. The team were in a confident place. I think we'd learned from the year before. We lost to Palace um, the year before. So it was, I think that first year, I think, Maybe we were in suits. The second year against you guys, against, against Preston, we was just in like fucking trackies and just chilled, calm, relaxed. I actually had a little fucking camcorder. I was doing some sort of like Vlog. video diary. Yeah, video diary, well, just was, ripping the lads to pieces. You one of the first YouTubers, were you? It was, uh, mate, honestly, it was, it was uh, I haven't got a copy of it. I think it's out somewhere, but the lads at Brighton had done it before, a year before, and then one of the, the one of the commercial guys said like, oh, mate, yeah, fucking take a camera. Do you just film like the change rooms and all that like before, a couple of days before? I was like, yeah, cool. But it was just me going around ripping the piss out of everyone. I think <laughs> basically he watched all the footage and said, mate, I can't say or can't put in half of the things you think. <laughs> like Hayden Mullins, we used to, he looked like um, Richard Reed, the shoe bomber. So I used to call him bomber the whole time. So any fucking... <laughs> Any reference to him, I'll be like bomber, laugh, like, and he's like, he'd be watching and go, I can't put, can't put it in, like, like everyone. But yeah, like, when you actually go to put things out, you can't put anything out. So, <laughs> and it is, it is something, and I think it's a bit of banter on the on the sideline and everything. But we were just in a real confident place. I think there's no way we would have lost that game, even if they'd have scored. Or I think we would have just gone up a gear. And yeah, Jimmy Walker played in that come off in the last yeah he's done right? his cruci yeah. his cra cruciate and Bywater comes on first thing he has to do is save a free kick oh, bottom corner I think I think uh, <laughs> I know you got I know you got promoted but should you have gone up automatic that year I know it's no easy. I don't think so don't that's think the year so. we won the league so, so not, we, we got promoted at West Ham yeah. I don't know if you can remember because I remember Pardew coming in to Mick McCarthy and saying you weren't the best team in the league, but I've got to shake your hand because you're <laughs> yeah. getting promoted and we're yeah, not, basically. Drilled, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys are just drilled, organised with yeah. him, wouldn't you, McCarthy? That's exactly what he's fucking all about. Every single week, make it hard for everyone else and we take you take your chances and score your goals. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't, it, that first year wasn't wasn't going to be our second year. We, we were good, we were okay, but we weren't all together until the back end of that season until actually we've got the fucking playoffs coming out mm. and we all we all just sort of come together same with the QPR one to be honest like we were a fucking shower of shite all, all year really great players shouldn't have been anywhere near where we was and just fucking alright come on let's pull our fingers out for the playoffs yeah done it and everyone done their jobs talk about that um, great escape year at West Ham mm. What what changed? Because was it? I'm just having a look here. They got some faulty players I'll, in, didn't they? I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what Couple changed. Of so I'll, tell, I'll tell you. The God's honest truth, right? So Curbs, we had Curbs as our manager, and he used to do match up. So if we're playing four four two against, if someone's playing four four two, we play four four two, three five. Okay, we play. Just marry up, just in midfield and fucking. It didn't work for us. Just didn't work for us as a team. We end up saying, fucking, any chance of a five side, a bit of fucking fun or something, like. And we ended up, on a Friday, we didn't do the pattern of play. We didn't do whatever it was. We done just games, just five sides. Weekend, we won. Monday morning, we come in. Hey, we're not fucking doing anything. We're just going to have five sides. Just going to have fucking games this week, Gaff. Like, we're going to have games. Just do games all weekend, five sides. Just fucking fun, I promise you. Weekend, win. Enjoy We've it. done that for about eight weeks, nine weeks, fucking just games, and we won every weekend. <laughs> Fuck, swear, Seven we won of the like last nine games. Four, uh, yeah, 11 out of 14 games, I think we won, or something like that at the end. No fucking tactics, just games, just fun, and we fucking won. Mad, like, just a real good set of lads. Again, everyone knows what they're fucking capable of, what, what their strengths are, Was really. it getting too heavy before that point in terms of 
Too much information. It's just boring, yeah. isn't it? That shadow play and it just yeah, gets... It, yeah, it can be, yeah. Just but it's so a much, bit of steam so off much, and start enjoying it again. Yeah, just so much... Like, like I say, the formation changes all the time and like trying to be over too tactical and... Yeah, it just it just wasn't for us. Like, but I suppose that's a bit of credit to the manager as well to be able to listen to the lads and say, right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, but then it just got on a roll and you mm. can't change it then. Yeah, like, 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 five, yeah. yeah. Five we sides. Just, yeah, games, five, five sides. You know when the weather just starts to change and fucking everything gets lovely, the train grass starts to get back <laughs> on the fucking pit. Fucking hell, yeah, like short, short stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it just turned, it just was fucking brilliant. But that, actually, that season, I... I that was my last. That was my last season, I think. I had something, uh, some some knee pain, and I couldn't train during the week. Really, was it that season or the season after? I think no, the season after because we had Tevez. No, that was that season, wasn't it? Yeah. And I couldn't really train, and we just signed Scotty Parker. Like the money just started coming in the Icelandics. Just started fucking. So yeah. everyone was on big dough there, and. Um, I had to have an injection to play on a weekend, but I wouldn't really train then. And I remember Egbert Magnuson, who was the chairman, he's like, we need you, we need you this weekend. Come to training, helicopter in, we need you, this, we need you. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, I'll be there, I'll be there, don't worry. And it was like, yeah, we'll get you a new deal. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So this is like five games towards the end of the season. So literally just start the conversation about to chief exec, Scott Duxbury, that new contract agent speaks yeah no worries let's just see how we go on the whether we stay up or not he's like yeah no problem we we, we can have the conversation though start to put the foundations in one for prem one for if if not okay cool duh, 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 duh. playing the game scoring goals fucking need you this weekend it's playing game score a goal fucking need you this weekend owners manager duh, duh, duh. it's like all right sweet. last game of the season obviously fucking man united away stay up buzzing summer comes i'm like fucking perfect like gonna have a new deal Fo agents phoning the chief exec all the time da, da, da. are we gonna get it done yeah we've got fucking six weeks all right yeah <laughs> no need worries you. need I'm, you to sign this contract <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, i'm just thinking right it's a matter of time now we're fucking safe brilliant fantastic slow over the six weeks go in the first week of pre-season i'm like gaffer like what's going on like Taking a long time, isn't it? The thing is, he's actually instigated this, hasn't he? With five weeks ago saying we'll get you a new deal. So well, the owner, the owner was, yeah, oh. the owner, was like Magnuson. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I, I go in like the first week and I'm said to the gaffer, like, oh, fucking hell, I'm taking a bit of time. He's like, yeah, I don't know. He said, I'll make a call or something. Monday after, I go in the train, I'm early always, like fucking buzzing, like just <laughs> in the training ground, a bit of breakfast, just fucking terrorize everyone that comes through the door. Gaffer wants to see you. Oh, all right, cool, sweet. Bowling to the gaffers, obviously a pre-season <laughs> happy as Larry. We accepted a, a bid from Fulham. I was like, fucking what? <laughs> like, do you know, like, where the hell has that one come from? <laughs> like, really, I had no idea where the fuck that had come from. Like, punch in the gut. Oh, yeah, like, I was like, he said, yeah, you, I don't think you're going to play for me much this, this year. So, like, I was like, wow. So I walk out, get on the phone to the agent. Was like, yeah. He said, yeah, um, Roy wants to see you uh, over at, at Fulham, so do you want to come and think so? I say to the boys, the boys are like, what? So I ended up going to see the gaffer there and uh, Roy. Did it hurt you that at all? Yeah, it did, yeah. I remember being so gutted. Like like I say, fucking, people don't see what you go through. Like when you are in, you're like, there are players that ain't going to do shit. If they're, if I feel a little niggle. You feel like this, you push through uh, for, I'm, for I remember well. having injections in my foot, in my knee, in my fucking hip, everything just to play, just to, because you feel like you're letting the team down. Like if, if you're not, you might not even be a hundred percent, but my fucking 50% is better than prick yeah, over yeah. there who's, who don't, don't want to be out there because it's a little bit cold. So yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth then when you're, you look back and oh, you just you are just a pawn, really, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? You're mm. just literally a little piece. Of Is that. that the first time maybe you you had a bit of realization for how players are treated in that way? Yeah, a bit. We signed Craig Bellamy, we signed Kieran Dyer, we signed uh, Matty Upson and Scotty Parker, and they, those guys would come in big dough. And let me tell you, if they don't fucking want to do something, they're not doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that was a real, more, more like Kieran and Bella's probably, more of a realization like, fuck me, they 
kick off, they ain't actually going to get what they fucking want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I ain't fuck, don't fucking doing it. Not fucking doing it. Fuck but, the same, but on that same point, you're you're getting injections and everything yeah. for the club. Yeah, for no, the not those guys that were like shit as is not to play in a game, but it just very vocal. Go and be above, very and, above and beyond. Fucking, yeah. What? Oh, fuck. This is. Do you know what I mean? Where I hadn't really seen that before. And then, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? If they wanted to go somewhere, they would, I'm fucking leaving. I'm going to wherever it was, whatever club it, wherever, wherever <laughs> club it would be. Do you know what I mean? Liverpool, I'm going to fucking fuck them. Do you know what I mean? Just. So you'd actually hear the comments, like these lads are saying, nah, fuck it, I'm not doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but just not, you know. See, I played with Bellas when he was 33, 34, and he were a bit like that then. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, look, I loved him. I loved him. Like, he would fucking ruin people, like, ruin them. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a couple of young boys that he fucking, like, yeah, I don't think they actually recovered from it. I don't know if they even went on to go and play again, to be honest, because he just, you're not on my fucking team. You're fucking shit. Not in my fucking five seat. Oh, fuck me. He's on my team. We're going to lose. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's like, like, oh, mate, Bellis, give him a, <laughs> give him a break. Give him a break. Like, 16 years old, 17 years old. But um, did he ever come for you? He, he actually came once and said, said one thing. I was like, fuck off, mate. You're <laughs> fucking shy. Do you know what I mean? Just gave it. And he was like, it's almost like, I think he's testing his boundaries with everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But I really like Bellas. I really liked him. A lot of people, like, you, you, you either like him, or, you know what I mean? Do you know, yeah. like, you yeah. rub you up the wrong I, way. I, 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 I don't think I'd like to sit on a Sunday afternoon with him yeah. in a boozer, just me and him. But I could half get where he were coming from with his attitude and all that. Yeah. But a good, good play, mm. and he would turn up and he'd do it on a Saturday, so you didn't mind it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What were you thinking when Mascherano and Tevez did come in? Mate, I had no idea who the hell they was. Did anybody? Not really. The game probably wasn't like it is now. So, yeah, they played in South America. Well, to be fair, now I still don't know who the yeah. fuck plays for anybody in <laughs> South America. But, like, at least now you can go on YouTube or go on something mm. or find out who they are. Back then, I don't think, oh, well, I certainly didn't. So there but, a point when you've... The, a training or whatever you think fucking hell we've got a couple here yeah but Teve was, was the worst trainer in the fucking world right. rubbish like just like just walk about like obviously had flashes of brilliance but wouldn't wouldn't try a leg really in training but on a Saturday work his cock off so again you don't mind that Mascherano was fucking unbelievable in training every single day learning English like English lessons, Tevez, nah, I'm just going to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> like Tev couldn't speak English no when he went to Man United or Man City, I don't think. I don't think he still still can't speak English now, Tevez. <laughs> can he not? Nah, but Mascherano, <laughs> like, com like completely chalk and cheese. Did but, he play a 4 4 2, Pardew? Uh, no, well, he. We ended up playing. It was 4 4 2 when we had the ball, 4 5 1 when we didn't. So me and Tevez was up front. And it'll be a little bit of a like run, not running joke, but whoever's closest to right wing had to be that one. So there'd be times we'd obviously got the ball and there's a turnover of play and we'd look to see where the F1 is. Fuck, it's me, bang. You've got to just bring, <laughs> just bring in. Like, but, I'm just going to sneak up towards the yeah, left wing. Yeah, he was good as gold. He was good as gold. Like, it look, you just laugh and just run <laughs> fill in. And I was happy with that. He was happy with it. Just go and do the, do the graph. But he was brilliant. Yeah, great. Amazing, amazing player. Well, you were left when the shit storm all happened about the... Third party and all that. We we played we played Sheffield United, didn't we? I think it was Dave was kicking off, wasn't they? Warnock and that. Mm. Still talk about it now, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Still want to replay and all that. Yeah, still. <laughs> but, <laughs> replay. Yeah, I don't know. Didn't, <laughs> nothing to do with us. The way you should like, <laughs> get your boots back in the replay. Like an old vets game, wasn't it? Yeah. Get them all back on. Yeah. Oh, you like you say, Morgan's <laughs> fucking head through the back end. <laughs> that one again. I'm guessing you wouldn't Good. have changed going to Fulham though. Looking at the that. You wrote the league run and all that. And no, amazing. Uh, the boys there were fantastic. It's meant to be a lovely club, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. Like, really nice, I tell you. Right. So I obviously came from West Ham, East London to, to Fulham. Obviously new shirts and new bits and pieces. So the club shop was open at the ground. So can you go for a couple of the boys to turn up for the launch of the new shirts? All right, cool. So I walk, walk in now and there's obviously fans queuing up outside. I walk in and if, there's like, because Alpha Ed owned it was Harrods, wasn't it? There was a few birds, like tidy birds with trays, trays of fucking champagne. Oh. Everyone that come in got a clock. I was like, mate, this ain't East London. Can you imagine? Because <laughs> that was West Ham shop. Boys, get the fuck down here, mate. Free champagne. <laughs> Free champagne down here. I remember going in and going, 
what? Every, what is this? Like, <laughs> yeah, real. Oh, hello. Do you mind if you sign my shirt for me, please? Like, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. No worries. That's just like real George Chief, but real family <laughs> club. Amazing place. Manager was amazing. Roy was was fantastic. Tough start though for you personally. Yeah, it was. Roy was so organised. He'd play four four two, and then the two lads up front. We had Andrew Johnson signed at the same time as me, so AJ was on the shoulder all the time. Boom, 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 run. When I didn't have the ball, I had to go and sit on Paul Scholes or Michael Carrick or whoever that holding or that Holy centre midfielder. Roll, it? Not nice, not nice. But you, I mean, I was I done it well because I fucking be just screen. Do you know what I mean? You ain't got to stand on them. Just screen the ball when the lads at the back have got it, or, and just press from the other side when they've got it. But it's a lot of work, and it's a long way from centre midfield to where AJ was or the centre halves. It just seemed really hard for me to get in the box and score goals mm. from there. Like. Mamadou Sidibe had that role at Stoke under Tony Pulis. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Fucking hard. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, an, not an easy job. What I liked is, obviously, the, all the lads that were in the team appreciate what you, we did, but... Joe Public in the stand hasn't got a fucking yabba dabba do. Yeah. What's going on? What are your fingers? Were you getting stick? At, yeah, I was getting, yeah, I was getting stick. Like, fuck it, in charge of you scoring a goal, whatever it was. Get to your so own. It's not quite that family um, club, is it? It did. It, it did <laughs> no, no it, it, it was, but it's like little, there was a little group of, yeah. a group, group of people that, that were there um, that you'd hear on a corner, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Like I say, on a, when I go back in on a Monday or after the game, lads are like, fucking brilliant on the weekend, mate. Fucking good. Appreciation yeah, fine. So, yeah like... that, that part was was there. So fuck everyone else. Don't really care. Yeah. My job, the manager was like, brain brilliant. If I wasn't doing good, the manager wouldn't pick you. Yeah, simple, yeah. simple as that, really. I know Al Fayed wasn't too impressed in terms of like he would look at the stats or or someone said, oh, he signed signed him for whatever five million quid or whatever it was, and two goals or three goals or whatever. It was. Why hasn't he scored more goals? And actually, Hull came in for me. I went to go and speak to. Uh, Phil Brown, I think it was up there. Would you have been at all then? No. no. Were they in the Prem then? They were in the Prem, no, yeah. I was going to no, say, I... the two big dogs up front. <laughs> yeah. Tugboat and Typhoon. <laughs> 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 all right, cheers, lad. Like I, uh, I came back from from how went into the gaffer's office, Roy, and I said, uh, just said, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. And he's like, absolutely buzzing. He said, look, I didn't want to, I, I wasn't allowed to say, but brilliant drawn a line there you're not going super you're going to play on the weekend so <clears throat> so that's super coming from above from yeah yeah so i was like all right super as it happens the next season andrew johnson does his cruciate right at the start of the season i end up going as you start a european campaign as well like i end up being the one at the top and Zoltan gira coming into that number 10 role or that defensive forward i used to call it role and yeah, just boom. I was that much closer. Just yeah. goal, goal, assist, assist. Just, yeah, I'm to see. It was just chalk and cheese. Did Done. you ever give it one of them to the corner that we're giving you oh, shit? Yeah, fuck off, you big fat cunt. Turns out he's. I wasn't even there. Yeah, yeah. He had a bigger beard than you. He had a big beard. He was a, door, he was a doorman. He was a doorman at a, a pub in Wandsworth or something like that. <coughs> it was a little group of people. <laughs> so, 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 to be fair, someone actually said that you didn't go to Hull because. There were no decent fishing lakes. <laughs> no, no, no. Jimmy Bullard was there, so I said, fuck that, no chance. <laughs> I've already got away from him at Fulham, but no, nah, I just, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't for me. I just thought, nah. I just had mm, my twins the year before. I was like, oh, I don't want to be going up there. Like, just, so, no, nah, it, it was a no. Bit Good north, bit too far north. Yeah, I only do London clubs, really, or down south. Yeah. That was it. Looking back, some, some decision. Mm, yeah, yeah. I've transpired from that cunt yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. that's a couple of celebrations I right. got a lot of complaints got a lot of complaints like why like chief exec I think called me in as, or the manager spitting like, the champagne out yeah no like yeah like obviously like, he shocked a lot of kids and there was a, there's, a, there's a couple of there's a couple of I think there's goals and you can see everyone going yeah as I run towards you, you see a couple of people go oh <gasps> <laughs> Looking at their kids and all that, I'm like, oh no, looking back now. Us. Yeah, like, there is, there's a couple, when, like, in the far corner, I haven't, like, yeah. You look at some of the players he's had, though, because you think Fulham getting the final of the Europa Leagues, a bit of a shock, but the players he's had, mm. Damien Duff, Greening, Clint Dempsey. Yeah, yeah, Dixon, Danny, 
Just, but so, so drilled, mate, that team was. I could have played left back, right back, anywhere in that team that second year because I knew as soon as I get the ball, he's going to move there, he's going to move there, he's going to move there. Those are three options. And then it goes there. And that player's going to have this, this, and this, 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 and this. Like, we've done it so much that everybody could have played in any position, genuinely. And that's why we were so hard to beat and so organised and so good. Boring as hell every single day, begging for a five-a-side, but... Yeah, we knew our jobs. Jeez, we knew our jobs. Did you ever meet Roy Hodgson's wife? Oh, I think I must have done, yeah. Because she must be a dragon. Because he's fucking 109, he's still going out to work, <laughs> isn't he? Going out of retirement. Just fucking, just leave it out, Roy, you know what I mean? Just enjoy your retirement. Yeah, he's, listen, uh, the way Roy plays and the way he manages teams is, is spot on. Listen, if you're any one of any team not in the top four, do well getting him. You know, you know you're safe, you like. They're just fucking knocking on Ed Roy. You know what I mean, <laughs> Jimmy used to clash, didn't they? Bullard. Yeah, a little bit, because Jim was just like free flowing. He wanted he wanted some sexy passes and he wanted <laughs> to be able to do some waz and swaz and this and that. And yeah, after a game on a Sunday, he'd, like if Jim would lose the ball, he'd just want you to get back and get into that hole and now you're on the defensive side. And Jim would just be a little bit slow. So uh, Mike Kelly, who was goalkeeper coach, but yeah, like I suppose the heavy hand of Roy, I suppose, on the videos afterwards, video analysis, he'd just dig him out in his like London, fuck it, ah, you fucking need to get in here. Yeah. <laughs> but them two would just be slagging each other off and <laughs> Danny Murphy would be sad. It, like, it should have been Jimmy, Danny and and Mike Kelly's just in a room and the rest of us are like, fucking hell, we're sat here for another 45 minutes while you lot just chat shit. <laughs> like you trying to dig him out, he's trying to justify it. <laughs> Danny's trying to be peacemaker and talk about uh, how to develop the game or something else, I don't know. You talk, t you've talked about them, them good dressing rooms you were in. We had um, Nerdem on uh, and he was telling us about QPR, how there was a bit of toxicity there. Yeah. Did you feel that? Oh yeah. Like, like I say, that was mad because we had almost like the English contingency that had got the lads from the championship to the Premier League. Then we had the new English lads that had come in that had played a lot in the Prem, would work hard, understand it. Then we had the foreign boys that had come for the big bucks. And the clash, the difference in wages to work ethic. Yeah. And it would just come to that, and yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of toxic fucking vibes in that changing room. You had some proper good English Championship slash Premiership players: Illy, Paddy Kenny, uh, Sean Derry. Yeah, lads. Who would you think they're Jamie not going to fucking wear? Yeah, some, yeah, some real good lads, some real, real hard-working boys that roll their sleeves up, give it their all, and then maybe got the ability of. The the lads all coming in, but so yeah, you say you'd it, was just have... a it was just a clash. Like I say, it's, if you're not going to roll your sleeves up on a Saturday when when there's a dog fight and you're fucking needed, who yeah. was the worst? We had Pesingua, who just come, who'd won the Champions League the, the year before with Chelsea. We had a game against Villa. I think he took a corner at Villa Park. He took a corner, came back to him, he lost the ball. They broke down the other end. The whole team had broke, like gone back. He was like fucking walking or was like just trotting. You know, like you've just lost the ball in the corner. You're right back anyway. Get yourself back. No, <laughs> just, just walked back. Then he lost, done a Cruyff in the box, lost the ball when they scored and he was laughing like afterwards. Do you know, like, and those are the things the lads, those, those lads, yeah. the other ones picked up and was like, this isn't, like I ain't having fucking that what are you laughing for do you know what I mean it's not funny I played with Loic Remy at one point he likened himself to a Ferrari that if he felt something if you're under Ferrari it's not 100% then you can't can't Take drive a it yeah like no <laughs> not gonna think we played Newcastle at home and we went dogfight I think they were they were third bottom we were fourth bottom something like that so it was a big big game we went out there fucking at, at Loftus Road like running our, our, our cocks off, fucking working hard. And he scores, we go 1-0 up. I kid you not, he didn't fucking try a leg after. 
We'd have won that game. We'd have pissed it. We lost 2 1. Got his goal. I'm done. Sweet. Cool. Chill. You know, like just. Don't need Ferraris in that situation. Yeah, just like, it? you're better off with 10 men. Are you were front with him? I was up front with him. So I was like, doing all his running. Hey, yeah, like, mate, come. And I like, just. It was just hard. It was just, just real hard, really. So. Can you remember any particular times where Kim were ahead with these lads that you spoke about, the Hill, Barton, and that where they've just you just got together or they've, they've they've said words to these lads? Yeah, 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 yeah. Plenty of tear ups on the training ground. Fucking, I think people were running and get bats out of the fucking car and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arbitrari was getting fucking pepper spray out of his car and Birchie spoke about that, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. 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 I think it, yeah, Armin was yeah, just That's a shit like, one, almost pepper like, spray. A, like a you and us. And then it, you know what I mean? It was just just not a nice vibe in there. And uh, I was a bit of a bit of a in in between, like Nadem as well, like just pull our fingers out, work hard and do you know what I mean? Like we stayed up last last game of season City didn't we uh, against City City won the league we, I think I actually believed that we would have we were safe with like five minutes to go and they scored Aguero scores at the end but we all know that we're safe I think if we needed to draw we would have drawn that game really so, really 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 think that really do because I remember I played I don't know 80 minutes and come off the last 10 I think I went down the line and actually said to Jamie Mackey I think mate we're safe they're Oh, I can't remember who Bolton it was. Bolton losing to Stork, I think. Whoever it was. Yeah. Mate, done. Game's over. He's like, all right, cool. Throw in. And I think that literally goes around to the boys. I think the fans jumping in the chat in the corner anyway. I think, yeah. And I think if it really needed to, I don't think they'd have scored. Someone would have looked booted or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. I think somebody asked whether it was you that got into Barton's ear to try and yeah, get... I, I, yeah, I actually, said to, I actually said to him, take someone with you. Meaning, <laughs> right? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, I know what I meant. Everyone else, I think, no. Take, so he was, he, no, he says to me, mate, I'm getting sent off here. I was like, I, I, don't, think, I don't think I saw the first bit, what, what had happened. And he says, I'm going, I'm, I'm getting sent off here. I was like, all right, take someone with you. Meaning, like, have a little scuffle, fucking have it like headbutt or fucking whatever. Like, I just have a scuffle and try and take, try and get somebody else sent off. <laughs> someone yeah. with you. Like, <laughs> if you're going and you're already going, I think he's already on your own yellow, he's getting another one for sure and he's off, <laughs> take someone with you. His interpretation was, go and fucking knee somebody. <laughs> get someone down, sort of with you on a stretcher. Yeah, like, but in my, actually after the game, I actually, had, he was like, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking done here, mate, I'm done. Can you, can you speak to the gaffer? So I go, I actually go to the, I go down to Mark Hughes and say, listen, Gaff, I'll be honest with you, I did say to him, take someone with him. His interpretation was a little bit different to what I had in mind, but like, I, I sort of, I, he's like, yeah, no worries, whatever. And then obviously he gets banned. He goes, plays in Marseille, doesn't he? South of France for a year or wherever it is. And every now and then I'd, he'd be on the phone to someone and he'd go, fucking tell Zamora, he's fucking dummy. Man. And i pick, wait, you're taking a piss, mate. You're in the fucking <laughs> south of France, <laughs> playing for Marseille. You taking a fucking piss, enjoy yourself. He's pissing down there, isn't he? See you later. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Can you have a word manager? Absolute, <laughs> uh, absolute turn, he's gone now. I think he's got more dough. He's like, unbelievable. It's like this, can you have a word with manager? Like, Bobby told me to do it. Yeah, Bobby told me to do it. Yeah. With me. Did, uh, did Fernando, no, obviously they kept signing us. The, the, the Fernandez, weren't it? The, yeah, the Tony Fernandez. Did he not really know what was going off at the dressing room and the training room and all that? Or were he just like, I'll just have to buy another player. Fuck it, I'll buy another player. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what went, went, went on upstairs, to be honest. Um, or who signed what or or what there, but it was just a little bit unorganised, unfortunately. Very quick break, ladies and gentlemen, because this next section of the podcast is sponsored by none other than Manscaped. Manscaped. Top and tier. never, ever as truer words been printed on a box than your balls will thank you. The very appreciative. Every time I look down, mine look up and go. Get the wink. Oh. I mean, look at that, Chris. Oh. We're talking the Manscaped Performance Package. Perfect Christmas present, I think, or if you want to look after your, your crown jewels. Top tier machinery. That's what that is. Precision engineering. So that's for the, the boys. That's for the boys. 5.0. We've got this that is for 
The bugle. Bugling lugs? Yeah. I don't get hairy ears, actually. That might no. surprise you, but it switches off easily. What else have we got? <laughs> We've got the crop preserver. <laughs> <laughs> the crop preserver. Big side which... point there. Switches off easy. <laughs> which is ball deodorant, anti chafing, I must add. And this one, the crop soother. Oh, that's what you want after you've trimmed yeah. them up. Settle them down. Lather them between your fingers. Let me give you a little bit of surprise, because you didn't see this coming, did you? Lift it up. Hello. Hello. Hold on. Little pouch, little pouch, little pouch. Look oh, at my goodness. Them. Once you've got them gleaming, get a pair of them on. Has that got a gold trim on the top as well? It's got a, have a look inside as well. Golden pouch. The golden pouch. <laughs> For the golden boy. Wash bag on the go. Chuck them all in there. So you can keep them all under one roof? Exactly. They just get better and better, these. I can't, honestly, I, I can't uh, recommend enough. No. And as always, we've got an offer. All you've got to do, use the code COSH20 at manscaped.com and you get 20% off. Christmas coming up. Boom. That's all I will say. Just Perfect for Christmas present, I think. So yeah, all you've got to do... 20%, job done. Manscaped.com, put in that code COSH20, get 20% off, free posters and packing. Next thing you know, it's on your doorstep, ready for Christmas. Would you say you enjoyed your, in, in, in all your time at QPR, would you, would you say you enjoyed it? Not really. It'll be the le- I, I had some good times there, but least enjoyable out of all of them. But obviously mm. there was some, the, the highs, even, even staying up, do you know what I mean? At Man City, that game, we lot, we lot. But even that was an absolute buzz, the back end of that season. And then playoff the playoff final. one was a, a real good buzz. Again, changing room wasn't in the right place, but we all come together back Jack's end of right. the season. Come on, we can do this. Um, the changing room, the, the way it was, kind of make a, play a part in your decision to go back to Brighton. Do you see it as like kind of a poetic fi- finish? For me, for me, I actually went back to Brighton because I, I, I've been promoted from two to one, one to the championship. It was championship to the Prem that I wanted the last so yeah. I get promoted every division that's what I wanted and we ended up missing out on goal difference I, I couldn't play from February anyway because of my hip so I ended up having an op but that was the, the goal to get promoted every division that's what I wanted um, yeah goal difference killed us yeah. and I'm like F- if I was fit I would have scored some goals and we would have been promoted automatically I'm, I'm, I'm sh- if I was fit fit because I was uh, like 50% probably are that, that final year of really what I could could do I still scored I, I remember every time I went out I'd fucking score a goal it was like mad like it was just like I'm going back to Brighton again every time I ran out I think I scored like 10 yeah. in 14 or something stupid like that just getting like, that consistency yeah again. just like the ball would just drop and bang I just you know like you just hit things uh, at Brighton I always feel that way just bang hit and it just goes in you, you don't do it yeah which of them playoff final goals would you relive if you could oh that's hard that's ah. hard um west ham obviously yeah. team you support it just was was a great buzz the friends and family but i think it 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 probably meant more to the qpr fans funnily enough um, and the Forest goal. fans, a lot yeah, of Forest yeah. fans got in touch. Yeah. 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 Forest Every legend. time that date comes around, I get messages from Forest fans. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, or, or yeah, they're absolutely buzzed for it. They do. A Derby fan got in touch saying I had my head in, the, in my hands before he took that shot. I've never been able to watch the goal again. Yeah. Go, run through. It's me only heartbreak in my life. Yeah. Cheers, Bobby. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Breakdown on Twitter. Yeah. To be fair, if that's his only heartbreak, he's not the one. Uh, he's he's done done it. It. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do you miss it? Footy. Yeah, I do now. I didn't at the start. 20 years of playing, the last couple of years, aches and pains, getting out of bed and fucking taking drugs to play games and get through training. It's just not enjoyable. Just the relief when you don't have to do it every day, Christmas, New Year's, going away, like skiing and things like that, that are just like complete no-nos, things you never experienced. And then you get to do all of those, but now, like that probably lasted three or four years. And then it's like, shit, 
I'm not. I'm never going to go to Anfield again. Yeah. Never going to go to Old Trafford. Never going to play at those stadiums. You know, which is which is gutting now. First time you go to Man United, you're like, oh, this is mad. This is amazing." And uh, and then it's just every year is the same. Just all right, I'm going to Old Trafford. All right, I'm going to Anfield. I'm yeah, going yeah. to Stamford Bridge and playing. And yeah, it's normal. And then it's gone. And it's like, oh wow, like what I'd give to be able to go back and play one more season just to take it all in just to take it all in because you just think when you're playing you just think uh, it's going to it's going to last and uh, whatever I don't know you don't even actually even though you get it said to you don't you You get. I remember people saying it and even when I've said it to young players I just know it's going yeah right? you just know it's going in and out or it go yeah all right, thanks see you yeah. later I'm like that with like Wrexham and Exeter and that, that they're, they're the games that I miss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I fucking play me, play me trade with. Yeah. You don't get the oh, same. I played at them. I played at both of those, mate. Don't worry about that. Fucking hell. Who's right. your favourite manager? Really, I, almost every manager that I've had has been brilliant for me, like in some way, shape, or form. The real, I've taken a little something out of all of them, all the experiences with them. So, yeah, from the like of, likes of Ian Holloway, who's like a mad character. I retired him, by the way. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've <laughs> had him on there. Just ask him about the lap of run that we used to do in pre-season. He was fit, fuck, fit. Like I remember a first year apprentice getting there, and I had no idea, just doing these runs. And like I was like, say, skinny, like little kid, first year, second year pre-season. I'd gone boom. So my fucking stripe pants like that. But I was a fit fit lads he used to smash everybody on these runs I didn't realise but he said if if I if he loses one of these he's going to retire I didn't realise that so I'm fucking running on his shoulder the whole way around this thing and then you go up the side of a pitch and then all the way along a back row so I'm running on his shoulder the whole way and then you come up the, up the hill bit and I just go Hit one next off. boom 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 just stride past him get to that thing bang and just leave him and then he goes well, I'm not playing this season fix it Jacked it in. <laughs> but he was, he was fit. We'd done a pre-season actually. I think the year after that, must have been when I started to go on loan, we had a six mile run, we had a six mile run, right? And it was three miles along a train track, like there's a pathway, three miles to this gate, touch the gate, the physios are there, mark you in and then run back. So he starts six minutes behind everyone, right? He said, if I catch her, you're doing double sessions. Like you're doing double sessions for everyone. So fucking everyone's, uh, obviously your group was fucking gutted. <laughs> like shit, I'm man, waiting for the train, me. I'm I fucking getting that one. <laughs> yeah. so, so everyone goes off, boom, gets to the end, the, the, free, the, the free mile post, and then you come back. But obviously, because you've touched that post, you can see where he is roughly. Where, do you know what I mean? You can see whether he's caught you up or mm. whether you're at the same distance or whatever. So obviously he's catching these guys up at the back. There's a guy called Frankie Bennett. If you jog from there today, it would have been dripping in sweat. <laughs> Pre-season, hot as hell. We're doing this six-mile run. He pegs it, he pegs it off, and he's in that, like, he's not designed for long distance running mm. at all. In that heat, gets to gets to the post, comes back. You can tell roughly like where he is. There's a little group of them. Michael Meek is in there, I think. Honestly, as Holloway's running past them, he's saying, Don't let me fucking catch you. Don't <laughs> let me catch you. He's like, fucking <laughs> He's starting to catch, but as the lads are scattered along this, like, it's just relatively straight. He's coming! He's coming! <laughs> like, obviously, obviously, they've got like two miles or three miles to go. <laughs> He's coming! <laughs> Everyone's like that. <laughs> Everyone's like running. And it's dripping with sweat. Like Frankie, I feel for him, right? Frankie Bennett, <laughs> dripping in sweat. It's like, obviously had to go up a couple more gears. He's, the, the heat has got to him and he's like starting to zigzag. I can't remember who was behind him. He was telling the story. I'm behind Frankie and all I can see is Frankie starting to zigzag, like <laughs> zigzag. And then all of a sudden he starts to slow down. Bang, collapses into, into a bush, like all nettles and all that. Lot. <laughs> if you and the boys stop, Holloway's coming. They leave him and go. The next, <laughs> the, next, the next ones that are coming, stop. Frank, Frank, you're okay. Thinking that they'll buy him like, listen, if I tell Frankie, I can't get in trouble here. So Frank's like, like struggling on the floor. Holloway's come running past. Get that fuck out, Frankie. Double sessions for you. <laughs> like fucking shouting in his ear. Frankie's like, tell, it, tell Michelle and the kids I love them. Tell them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell him I love him. He, he really thinks he's going to die. The lads get up to there. It's obviously a horrible little track. They've called an ambulance, but... There's no way you can drive a car up there. So we had Michel Kuypers, who was a goalkeeper. He was an ex-Dutch Marine mm. goalkeeper. He carried all the, the medics uh, stuff from the, the ambulance, ran it, ran it up there with the, the team. And yeah, he, he come, obviously come round, he was okay. And, but yeah, Holloway was put the fear of God even to everyone in pre-season. He's, <laughs> I animal. think he's catching me by the gear. He's catching me. Yeah. What, yeah. What's that? It's like 20 minutes, is it? Yeah. 22 minutes? Yeah. 25 Maybe. Just want to ask about that. Five the care. lead up to the FA Cup final. Did they get Peter Check in? Yeah. To practice the penalties. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was mad, man. That's uh, yeah. For me, like I said, I, I took penalties both both footed, which which uh, I don't know if it's good or bad. What made you decide on which one? So I think when Peter Check came, every player we do we had a training session. Every player would go and take six penalties against uh, Peter Check, and I took three with my left, three with my right, and I scored all all six so I was like alright cool fine didn't have any worries about penalties there wasn't never anything that I was really like, I, took, I took penalties scored missed a couple is what it is knew on the day what I wanted to do and where I wanted to put the ball like left foot bottom left corner wasn't a horrendous penalty keeper goes the Good right way it's one of those things and looking back now I suppose with a little bit more experience I would have maybe gone right footed like I do at the end of game I'll take so if I'm take if I wanted to place a penalty or whip a penalty, I'd take it with my left. If I wanted to smash it, I'd take it with my right. At the end of games, uh, say eighty minutes onwards, I would take it with my right foot because I always think to myself, "Well, keeper can't stand still, stand in the middle of the goal uh, and take a gamble with five minutes to go." Do you know what I mean? If a ball goes in the corner and you're stood there as a goalkeeper, you haven't moved, you're getting pelted. Like it, I think in their heads, so I always think the keeper's going to make a move. So I always stick it straight down the middle, head height, just boom, just clip it straight down down the middle. But in hindsight now, in that situation, I probably would have stuck it down the middle with a little bit more experience, you know, just thinking he's, if he doesn't move and then penalty shootout, you're a mug of a keeper, aren't you? You, mm. you get like... Keep it there. Good save move. though, wasn't it? It was all right. It wasn't a horrendous penalty. Like, yeah, absolutely fucking gutted. So I, hindsight with any penalty you would have gone over with them yeah yeah <laughs> but, but no this, that, that was my that was my go-to I think yeah. more than more than straight down the middle but with the experience I would have gone right foot now straight down the middle I remember walking up taking the penalty no nerves at all madness no nerves like nothing put it down boom take my penalty save fuck and even afterwards it was like shit at least take the target <laughs> take a little bit of positive yeah. from it yeah. did you have a party arranged for after uh, there was there was a hotel in, we flew back and yeah there was the, the hotel if we won or lost or whatever but somber had, yeah somber everyone night. sort of got there and then just shut off to be honest we had um, Lionel Scaloni obviously Argentina manager now yeah. he played in that in that game and uh, well he threw the throw in inside I think which goes which falls to Stevie G or plays it inside instead of going up the line really which in, again in hindsight and he took that as his mistake amazing guy he was by the way Lionel like real good 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 lads he took that like personally cried from the end of the fucking penalties till we got home with his dad like just cried the whole the whole way home he still had a lot of do like didn't he Say again. He still had a lot to do. Oh, mate, Fuck I'm, me. Mate, I'm behind him. The ball goes like that. I'm stood behind Stevie G and it drops. And I'm like, nah, I mean, like a little bit of me is thinking, just hit, hit it. it. Nah, no chance. You got no chance, really. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no. So, but honestly, Steven Gerrard is the, the one player with England that stood out for me. Stevie yeah. G. Yeah. Just want to speak about that just quickly. The, the World Cup because you were struggling with injuries weren't you yeah uh, that was the European Cup final year my, my year with with Fulham good year for me but the back end of that season I was struggling with with my Achilles and I needed an op um, I probably shouldn't have played the European Cup final either but it was one of those things out like give me an injection and just again mm. just try to just want to be a part of it you can't do the whole season and miss out yeah. um so, yeah, ended up playing it, not really doing too much, 
doing my bit, but I go in at half time, second half, I can't even move. Like it's like super glued in, fucking agony. So I had to have an operation, but that was hard with Capello and like Frankie, Franco Baldini as well. And both of them just, you want to move your chair, mate? That son's fucking your first, first degree. <laughs> <there. laughs> I can see you moving more and more like that. Got one eye shot. But yeah, obviously, Franco Baldini come to a lot of games that year and watched and Capello had come to a, quite a few. And um, yeah, the, the conversations were, want you to come to the World Cup? And I was like, okay, how's your leg? How's your injury? You, you, we're thinking about it. Are you going to be okay? How do you think you're going to be? I said, no, I don't think I can go because I, in my head, I would go. I couldn't train. So I didn't train at Fulham for Monday to Friday. I didn't train because you couldn't. So if I go to England and I'm there with Frank Lampard or Stevie G, whoever it may be, I've gone away. I'm not training. What are those guys? I know if someone comes along and looking like, what's mm. this guy? What's like? And if I'm not training, are you actually even going to pick me to play? Not yeah. really. Would they have been comfortable with you doing that? Would they have taken you to the World Cup knowing that you couldn't yeah. train? Yeah, but I didn't feel comfortable with it. Yeah, looking back now, I Still wish a big I would have gone. Decision looking back, because, but... yeah, because it was. But but for me, it was like right. I got six weeks to get myself fit for next season, which I wanted to go and smash. Like, well, I'd, I'd, it. yeah, I know. But I, I, what part was going to play? That's the way I saw it. If I could turn back time now, I'd have gone and just been a vegetable and sat there and enjoyed the experience. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I went to a World Cup. But I thought I was trying to think logically of. But then in Go. hindsight, the other way around, if you had gone and done that, you might be looking back now thinking, I shouldn't have gone. They might have uh, took somebody else that could have made the difference. England could have won the World Cup. Well, it was a completely shit World Cup when it was South <laughs> Africa. They were, they were crap. So well, it's good swerve. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, the, that's the way I saw it. And yeah, there's, a, there's only a couple of bits I'd, I'd change really in, in my career. And that would be one of them. The other would probably be signing for Liverpool. I should have probably gone to Liverpool. From where? From Fulham. Roy. Where I went to Liverpool. Close. They yeah, they, they bid and Spurs bid at the same time. 10 million quid, the pair of them, at the same time. Um, I actually played, when I played for England, my first game against Hungary, I get in the, I get in the lift with my best pal, Luke uh, Williams, who who was, who I said, as a Norwich and all that, Norwich. And he's actually Notts County manager now. He was, he was in the lift with me, with Stevie G. And after the Hungary game, Stevie G goes, Mate, fucking brilliant, say, well done, mate. Because obviously I trained that, that week as well. Like the first week, I thought it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> Stevie G goes, mate, would you come to Liverpool? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, well done today, man, brilliant. Said, he goes out, my mate looks at me, goes, fucking Stevie G, Liverpool. <laughs> like, I'm like, fuck, <laughs> yeah, like mad. And then they came, he said, I'll speak to Roy. And then, yeah, the bid came uh, a little while after, same as Spurs, but I just had my girls. Alfred was like, you're not going anywhere. Mark Hughes was like, listen, you're going to be my key man. Da, 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 da. I need you. I need you. We'll give you a new deal. I was like, okay, I don't know. I don't know how. Oh, I don't know why. I just said, yeah, okay. So I ended up signing a, uh, an, a new deal at, at Fulham. Broke my leg the day after. But, but. Um, so that was unlucky, but. Lucky, Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in the van when I, in the, in the ambulance, like that to the head of sports science, like, that's, that's, they can't take that away now, right? It's fine, right? <laughs> is he dry? Is he dry? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, I probably should have gone to Liverpool, regardless of, like, listen, Roy didn't do great there, or he wasn't, you know, Again, probably should have gone line, so. yeah, five years at Liverpool, or, yeah. you know Fucking what I mean? Hell. You can hit a few branches on the way down from there, can't you? Can hell yeah. So. Yeah, that probably, but even Spurs, you know, Harry Redknapp was a manager then, he tried to sign us, sign us there. So, yeah. If you was, went on a night out, who would be the three people we'd want on it, we have played with and why? See, I don't even know him, I'm putting Redknapp in, just for the knockdowns. Mm. <laughs> Teddy? No, nah, so. Yeah. Teddy? <laughs> yeah, J JT would probably be up there again. I'm real close with him, good lad. We used to fucking all go out. And we had a great, mad little school when I was at Brighton, actually, that first bit. Like, he was at Chelsea, uh, Paul Kincheski was at Charlton. We had a load of lads, the West Ham boys, Joey Cole or Michael Carrick. We used to go and meet in Romford. So I would say to the gaffer before, gaff, can I drive my car up, like South Mims or wherever it was, as far as we can up north, we're playing somebody up north. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We park your car at the service station, as you do. 
on the way back, I used to be driving a hundred and something to get to Romford. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, don't sound like Romford. That. Like, but the, the school that was there was incredible. Like, I don't know how it ended up. Romford was like a, just the local. But uh, JT probably. Um, ooh, Robbie Keane's a funny boy. Robbie's mm. good lad. Charlie Oakley would be up there actually. Don't know how much you could take of him. <laughs> too much on the base, just entertaining on a night out and just a funny boy probably end up with getting bold or something in there but <laughs> <laughs> Apart from sounds that. like a good one mm. did you did you notice that the, the further we went through your career the less the drinking schools yeah yeah for sure for the for the worse i think not for the better um in terms of changing room camaraderie yeah but I just think also the game has just changed really. Like, yeah, like, like I said, that little school, me in Romford, like everyone has got a fucking camera phone now. Like it, not, not that you're doing anything yeah. wrong, but everything can be interpreted the wrong way where it's just, you know what I mean? Holding a beer, mm. old, you know, at 21, 22 years of age, you're just getting criticized. And, and everyone's on your back. Yeah, you're just getting battered for it. and. Yeah, I think it's just a, a little bit hard now for people to go out and, and do anything. Yes, the game has turned a little bit more professional and maybe the standards and the, the I don't know, the volume of load that, that players are doing is a little bit higher. But in terms of changing room camaraderie, I don't think... It weren't much better than a thing than Monday morning coming in though. What a fucking what a night we had. Yeah, like, yeah good. Did you, yeah, good. Did you shagger? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> yeah, 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 fucking right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if you did, yeah. Yeah, fucking right, I did. Yeah, it could. It, it, no, it, get it the it same round the round no. the lodge. No. Can't be giving, can't be giving Frank at side here it. No. Car pont and a bit of shit, can you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Is that a big thing then? Now the fishing, you know, like, because you've got. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah it's, I, I've always always done it just very hard when you play footy really mm. to, to actually get the time or yeah your diary and there's, there's other things that you have to juggle so when I when I finished it was like right perfect I've got some time now I can really put some hours in do you think it's cheating you know chucking your rod in and putting it on with the beat just falling asleep to lit beats no no I it's, oh, my, I, yeah, I, yeah, I it's a lot there's a lot to it I think that's cheating <laughs> me yeah <laughs> I, didn't even know that. no, I didn't even know that so, was a so, thing so you wang your rod in Probably two or three if you're carp fishing. Wang your rod in, put them on a, a stand and attach your line. As soon as the black bite comes, beep, 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 then you'll get up. See, I think mean, that's cheating, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> fucking noddy. What do you, what do you fucking know? No, is he uh, a, is he a, is no, he a it's fucking nice. It's, it's, it, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. So, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, enjoy is it. Just a, just a sitting and being quiet. Tranquil. No, no, yeah, there's a lot. There's, again, if you're doing it properly, there's a lot going on. Mm. That you're always doing something. So, um, yeah, just enjoy it, mate. Ali's a great guy, a good friend of mine. So, he started his brand and um, just helping him out and just going, and going to some places that I probably wouldn't be able to go or wouldn't choose to go um, without him. So, it's just a great experience for me to, to go to these places and catch some fucking giant fish. Biggest you've, <laughs> biggest you've caught? Uh, 69 pounds, so that's a big old, big old lump of carp, yeah, that like is, anyway. Yours, so that's my so your thigh, yeah. Yeah. Left, left thigh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so big, that's a big old thing, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> cheers, mate. Yeah, I really 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 enjoyed that. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks, man. Brilliant. Yeah, cheers, cheers, nice gentlemen. One. Sounds cool. Yeah, it's fucking it's cheap. Always, it's cheap. always been that. I've never known... That's, that's beep, the beep, beep, thing, really. Is that, what's that carp? Mr. Bobby Zamora for the final episode of the series, gentlemen. I cannot believe you didn't come in with a song. I know. What Should happened? Have done. He's forgot it. That's what's happened. No. I've been, it's been in my head all week as well. Which one? The I'll be honest, because we put the questions out and I had to Google the correct version because I always knew when the ball hits, when, when the ball hits your head when you sat on Rose's head. That's Zamora. Good guest. Very good guest. Big name. I've never seen you so interested in getting onto fishing. I like could, a bit of fishing. We could. Sh when have you last been fishing? We could short World Cup chat for carp. When the last time you went fishing? I've been fishing in the last four months. Once. Did you like it? Fishing? Yeah. I think it is a bit of you. Fishing? Relaxing. Yeah. yeah, I just start doing fuck all. Start, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Did you take your young'un? 
No, hey, brother. Catch out. Ah, of course it is. I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll send photo in. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, so, looking forward to I this. I like the photo. You know, like with the me, uh, Novel Cuisine meal. I like that little photo. <laughs> <laughs> on that photo, did you, did you make it again to take the photo? Or was that no, one I'm, you already had in the archive? I've already, I've already, it's already, uh, it's, yeah. Already got that photo. Just in case anybody asks what you had for your tea, I'll say that photo, I've had this. Oh. We're playing some massive games, by the way. Yeah. Europa League final, FA Cup final, two, two championships. Two playoff finals. I think, uh, I think the championship playoff game is bigger than the Europa League final game. Do you get in? No. Do you get in Champions League if you win that Europa? Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe not then. No. For the clubs, it's bigger in the championship, financially. Yeah, to get but into the Premier League. Players like Thingy, you want silverware, don't you? I think. Yeah. Would you rather win, Chris? Oh. The Euro 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 European Cup, Europa League Cup. It's still a European Cup, isn't it? They played Shakhtar Donetsk in one of the rounds, and nearly every player's gone on to be like world class. What Fernandi from Shakhtar? Fernandinho. I don't know. I'm like. You feel? I think I'm sat. Thingy. We had too much of a Willow. line. William, Diego Costa. William. But well, yeah. these all play for Shakhtar the next. Against Fulham. Well, that, that Atletico team that they played, Aguero, up front, I can't remember who else. But there's some <laughs> big players in there. What were the wing for? Who was that? What country is Shakhtar the next? Russia? Russia. Fuck. Well, that, that, you unbelievable. Know what? That you, you've, you've taught me something there. Mm. Not the Russia bit, but I never knew that all them players had gone to, to there. Yeah. yeah. And Fulham beat them. That's the flipping. I'd had some good players though, Fulham back then. Mm. Who Last Gira. <laughs> <laughs> Zoltan. Zoltan. <laughs> uh, Do you know what? It was refreshing. He mentioned the uh, defensive forward role and looked at me when he said it. Yeah. You know, Chris. And he, did, he, he was even saying himself he didn't score as many goals when he was in mm. that role, but still gave a lot to the team. Yeah, man after my own heart. <laughs> I don't, do, you, do you know that we played? Mm. Yeah, I got in early talking about your knee surgeries. Just, just, yeah. to, just, to, just, to, just drop it in. Yeah, Gary Doherty. Got oh, to Gary Doc. I mentioned because I, I have had a, a night out with him in Vegas. He can't remember that. He, well, no, he definitely couldn't. But he, um, he just, uh, I don't think he wanted to go into the Vegas chat. <laughs> <laughs> What, Last happens, something, what happens over there? Something's the best left unspoken about, <laughs> aren't there? Yeah. Last episode of the series. I know. Jets, it's been a pleasure. Uh, How long we have been most off? Most of the time, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a good series. You've been in Orion one or two trips? M well, it's a four or five. What? <laughs> Just like nagging. Because you, all in all, nagging? you've done well. Nagging? You pull your socks up, lads. I think, it, I think it's flown me. Yeah, it feel like, does. Don't feel like 15 well, We're not stopping though because we need, we, we've got to get the recordings in for next series. We'll have, a, we'll have December off. No. Back you, at it next week. Us, give us to the new year off, Chris, shall we? No. Fucking hell. We've just been working his fingers to bone. No, because we've been recording, recording. This series has been like cocoon. We've had that many man, old managers on because we've not been able to mix it up because we've not got ahead of ourselves. Are you being a little bit disrespectful to the old managers there? No, they're old and they're ma they were managers. We've got a few young sprogs on. Well, 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 how long can we have off then, Chris? Straight back on it next week, can't we? Are we? <laughs> <laughs> Straight back on it. Thanks, everybody, who come to Norwich last week. We've got loads more um, live shows coming up for 2024. February, February through oh, to. We, I was in a room with this one at Norwich. I have never. And I mean, ever seen a man eat so much food in so little time? It's unbelievable, isn't it? It was good as well. It was good. It was. I only. I had a slice of pizza and a bit of a kebab. But you finished my kebab at your kebab. Had a twelve-inch pizza and a big, and I mean, big portion of chips as well. But like, obviously, this is one in the morning, two in the morning, one at three in the morning, whatever it were, and then. You don't want that smell. You don't want to wake up to that here. Garlic. So he, he did the shovel, pizza box, 
kebab ki- containers on top, open. They're all open. It's not, they've not been closed up, you know, nicely. And he just opened the door and shoved them in. <laughs> in, it was a tight corridor. I didn't realise how tight it, it was, was narrow. when I did the drop It was narrow. And in the oh, morning, no. we were in a bit of a rush because we had to get the train, opened the door, greeted by the cleaning lady, who was not happy. Mm. She was like, have you left all this here? And I'll, I'll give it to you, quick thinking. Because Matty were across the road in number 17. And he goes, just in an heartbeat, he just went, no, no, I thought I could smell something, he said. But there were a lot of commotion out here about three in the morning. I think it was him in, in number 17. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give him a knock, if I were you. Disgraceful. Oh, <laughs> disgraceful. Oh, the smell. <laughs> the smell. Disgraceful. Give him a knock. Quick luckily, thinking on your feet. I like I'd, it. I left a little, there was a, garlic bread box, weren't they? Yeah. That you could see. So she must have just thought we'd had a cosy garlic bread between us. And, and, so and the rest was number 17. Yeah. I keep an eye on him, he's trouble. Well, she'd have looked at it as well <laughs> and just seen two trouble. of us and thought there's no way even two men could eat all that food. <laughs> must have been a big party in 17. Yeah, 17, there's four of them in there. Uh, <laughs> all, all those live shows done for the year. Uh... Yeah, I think my... Th- Friday this week after release, all the new dates should be on the website. You can go on and get your tickets for the new dates. We've got some good guests coming up. Very good. Some good venues coming up, coming to some uh, new new cities that we haven't been to before. Plymouth being one that comes to mind. Uh, but have a look. Perfect Christmas present. Perfect Christmas present, if you ask me. Easy Valentine's for, presents. Easy, easy for one someday, isn't it? Valentine's present? Well, we've got something on the 15th of Feb. Oh, bring the lady down. Bring the lady. Should we get her? I don't know. I don't think they're they're bringing the ladies to Sunderland, will they? Mm. The predators of heart. (laughs) (laughs) The biggest predator in the animal kingdom. Predators strong. (laughs) The connotations that come with predators. Animal kingdom. (laughs) Here's one for you. Here's one for you. So, you know, (laughs) moving on from the live shows. You know, when I... uh, Picked the woman's steak up and took a bite. <laughs> Bit twattish, isn't no, it? No, we're not. No, I'm mean, not talking about this. No, no, no. Is that as no. bad? No. Is that no. as bad? Right. Thank you very no. much for listening. <laughs> we'll see you next series. <laughs> Nothing to do with me, by the way. I'm out no. of this one. Oh, me. But uh, it was that. <clears throat> It's blemish. No, it's completely out of character. So I don't want to. I don't want to put a ble- blemish on my own. Ca- I'm, I'm incredibly. If anybody, any live shows distraught. next year wants to know what we're on about, come it's and find me. The, it's going in the intro. I'll yeah. fucking tell you. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it was a, a, a momentary lapse of character. We, we can it was it disgusting. Show. That's what it were. What else but, is happening? Uh, we'll be back with a new series in February. Yes, we've we got two months off then anyway, haven't we? Oh yeah. no. Yeah, three. Exactly, that's what I mean. So we need oh, to get right, some we'll get recordings it for, hey, in. Let's fucking get back at let's it. Let's dig in. Yeah. Let's get back well, at m- it. Massive thanks to everybody for, for sticking with us for the series. Listening. Obviously, Patreon will be continuing throughout the, the uh, two month and beyond where you get them extra two episodes every month. Don't think I'm forgetting about... Another uh, great Christmas present, by the way. Sorry. St- changed, hasn't he? Oh, I was turning to right twat. I'm just thinking about getting my dad's episode released, if that's all right with the hierarchy. Because we put it on Patreon, didn't we? And we've, we've had a word with everybody on Patreon who seemed to think it was happy. To, it needs to be heard by, I think so, by the masses. Don't yeah. it? Papa Brown out for, the, for, the, for everybody over Christmas. That's a Christmas present in itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's fuck it. Let's put the bomber out, eh? Bomber Brown. So we're going to get a bonus episode out just before Christmas. A little Christmas nugget. Appreciate that, Chris. What about me? <laughs> I've said yeah as well. <laughs> Is there anything else going to be going on? No. Christmas Have a nice Christmas, Christmas, got a Christmas quiz. Do. Christmas quiz. <laughs> Have we got time? We're going to be recording a lot, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Let, Watch this space for a Christmas quiz. We might have to uh, knock it on the end of Christmas. Do if we're recording, recording, recording. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, Otherwise, no. we'll see them next year. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everybody for. Uh, Thanks for, for all the sponsors. Viewing. Everybody subscribe. We got to that 100,000. Oh, how we did, didn't we? Well done. Uh, it was at Shorey, won the shirt. Yes. Have we said that? Oh, don't look at me. <laughs> Shorey. 
Um, get in, get touch. in touch on Twitter and we will send you a shirt because we said the new subscriber would get a shirt. So, Shory, that's all the information I've got. Not sure on his first Shory, you can sort that out. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, Have a fucking absolutely fantastic yeah. Christmas, Hope everybody. everybody has a great Christmas once again. Thanks for listening through 2023. We're back in 2024. <laughs> I'd like, I'd like <laughs> I'd like us to take these chairs everywhere. They're comfortable, aren't they? Do you want to make any improvements going into the new series? Selfs, personally? Um, a bit of self-reflection? Is it worth maybe putting it to people whether they prefer the intros and the outros or, yeah. or what? Should we do a... Bit of a vote? Yeah. Do you prefer thing. the intros or the outros after a, a bit a of market of research should we put out? Mm -hmm. We could put uh, some on Twitter, you know, the we vote. Yeah. And on Instagram. You can do it on that as well, can't you? What do you prefer? Or in the comments on the video. Uh, I think I prefer intros, personally. So what the, the, the so short People ones. say they're too long. And they just want to get into interview. So you prefer the old, longer intros? I'm, I'm easy. I'm easy. You I'm know, bothered. I don't give a flying fuck. You've done some good intros. But yeah. I think people just want to sometimes put YouTube on. I've just get done on a, ba a basset there. <laughs> Um, Spitting on picture pants. <laughs> <laughs> Put YouTube on. See what I mean? <laughs> that, 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 that's, of that, no, that's of the ilk. Yeah, some people just want to put YouTube on and get straight to the, the meat of the beer. Yeah. 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 They're just the sh shit. <laughs> so, happy Christmas, everybody. Yes. Okay, everybody. Have, Have a great time. Christmas, great new year. See you See in 2024. In February.